Hello friends, I'm back and I'm going to give a very short, a kind of <laughs> review, I think. This is my second review on Masai 2030. There's three points in the whole production that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to play the actual clips from the movie or the documentary. To me, it's more like a documentary because it's documenting all the prophetic scriptures throughout the Old Covenant and the New. And it really does break down incredibly well, the timeline. There's so much information, so much detail. I mean, it's astounding to me the amount of time they took to put this thing together. It's really amazing. So I'm going to play both the trailer and I'm going to go to play some of the clips that are in this two hour long documentary. OK, what I'll do, let me read the description here, the information in the description section here. It says, no man knows the day and hour of the Messiah's return. However, the Bible makes it definitively clear we are to know the season. Dozens of biblical prophecies predicted the precise year of the Messiah's first coming. Those prophecies were correct. He came right on time. Those exact same prophecies also predict the precise year of his return. And it is soon. Wow. They go on to say that if you'd like to contribute or purchase or even rent this movie, then please do so. In fact, I'll leave the description, this link in my description at the end, okay? Let's go and play the trailer because some of you have seen this already. You went onto the website and you purchased it, which is awesome. But there's a lot of you who haven't. So I'm going to play the trailer. Hopefully there's no lagging. That would not be good. One moment. Okay. I was halfway in the trailer. Let me enlarge the screen. Here we go. Have you been wondering if recent global events are quickly moving to the fulfillment of end times prophecy? Have you been wondering when the Messiah is going to return? There are dozens of prophecies that predicted the exact year of the Messiah's first coming. And he came right on time down to the exact year. Those same prophecies, again, dozens of them, also predict the exact year of his return. Those prophecies were right about his first coming. Will they be right about his second coming? No one is talking about this. But now, everyone will. Watch Messiah 2030. The Prophetic Messianic Timeline at Messiah2030.com Okay, wow. Oh my goodness, so exciting. Just watching the trailer, friends. Okay, so in the actual movie, let me pray, play. Let me pray also. <laughs> no, seriously. At the very beginning, well, let me start by just playing the intro. I think it's fair to start from the very beginning, right? Hold on, here we go. Very exciting. There's a bit of lag, typical. Who offers calendrical interpretations of biblical messianic prophecy and patterns. Despite the implied confidence in the following presentation, these interpretations are in no way definitive and could be subject to alternative explanations. This presentation will reveal over two dozen biblical prophecies and patterns that point to the precise biblical year of the Messiah's first and second comings. We will systematically review each prophecy and pattern and watch it build and reinforce a 7,000 year messianic timeline that reveals a first coming in 30 CE and a second coming in 2030 CE. What we will find is that dozens of prophecies and patterns accurately determined the exact year of our Messiah's first coming. These same prophecies and patterns also show us the exact year of his second coming. Since these prophecies and patterns were accurate in predicting his first coming, would it not be reasonable to expect the same degree of confidence in predicting his second coming? Mm. 
This timeline is hidden in the creation events found in Genesis chapter 1. It is even hidden in the design of the tabernacle. It is hidden in the parables of the Messiah. It is hidden in detailed events in the Old and New Testaments. It is hidden in the words of the prophets. As you will soon see, this messianic timeline is found everywhere in the scriptures. These and more will be included in this presentation. Wow. Okay, that is quite an introduction, isn't it? What do you say? My goodness, I'm going to move this to the minute mark 25 and I want to play it. Tell me what you think afterward. I, I wish I could just play the whole thing, friends. <laughs> I probably could, but it will be a long recording. It'll be two hours. Well, some of my live streams are that long, aren't they? 25 minute mark. Okay, let me play it from here amazing isn't it it's so good to just show snippets with you because obviously there's a lot to say and there's a lot covered in this presentation this documentary this movie so much information friends they've put so much work into this all right let me play it from here okay let me go a little bit earlier than that 24 minutes okay pattern in the ten commandments the fourth commandment is the commandment to observe the sabbath the seventh day Sabbath is a messianic prophecy detailing the rest we are to enter on the seventh millennium. Thus, the pattern of the fourth and seventh days are even present in the Ten Commandments. The Hosea Prophecy Hosea tells us without any lack of clarity when we can expect our resurrection. We can expect to be resurrected after two days. The one day is a thousand years principle was a concept familiar to Hosea. Hosea's prophecy is incomprehensible without it. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. After two days, or two thousand years, we have a resurrection to look forward to. The Jubilee Principle At this time it is necessary to reveal the Jubilee Principle. Just like the day is a thousand years principle revealed a prophetic unit count, so does the Biblical Jubilee as a unit of 50. The prophetic Jubilee as units of 50 are hidden numerous times in the scriptures. As an example, John chapter 2 verse 20. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? 46 years? It doesn't sound important on the surface, but that detail was provided for an important reason. It properly illustrates the Jubilee as an interpretive prophetic timing unit. When we multiply 46 years times a Jubilee unit of 50, we arrive to 2300. 2300 is an important number in the book of Daniel, specific to the matters of the future temple restoration. Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, And he said to me, For 2300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. Wow. Well, it's not direct fulfillment. The connection of 2300 is not an accident. The restoration of the temple context is similar. This demonstrated the utility of the Jubilee principle. It unlocks prophetic timing. A lot of prophetic timing. The Genesis 6 prophecy. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in, contend with, man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. While the ESV states abide in, many lexicons provide contend with as an alternate, if not a more likely translation. God states that he will not contend with man forever, but only 120 years. Contend means to struggle in opposition. God has certainly been contending with man for more than 120 years. The scriptures are filled with man contending with or opposing God repeatedly and cyclically. Man is still contending with God. God did not stop contending with man at the flood, but we do see that God put an expiration on contending with man. Amazing, isn't it, friends? Oh my goodness. In the beginning, obviously he's going through this seven day creation timeline. So we are now around here between day four and day five. And what I'll do, I'll skip it a bit more into, because I've actually gone past the Flesh other minute mark. Oh, one moment. I went past the 24 minute mark, but I also want to play from 45. Hold on. Let me go and get that one moment from here. You really got to rent it out and watch it. 
Okay, let it refresh. Believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. This matches the Hosea chapter 6 verse 2 prophecy perfectly. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. You see, this scripture is quite pivotal, isn't it? Because we do read in Hosea this concept after the two days. So we are after what, 2,000 years since Messiah. So after the two days or the 2,000 years, he will revive us on the third day, which will bring us into this region here. The seventh day, you guys. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It takes a lot of time, a lot of study to produce something like this. And you've got to study it thoroughly. And I have nowhere near studied this as much, to this extent anyhow, as much as um, this production team have, obviously. Let me continue to play it some more because it's so good. I've got to go. <laughs> Let me play it again. No, I'll just play from there. One moment. So we clearly have a picture of the Messiah coming down and then resurrection that occurs after the mention of the two days. But remember, the two days or 2,000 years from this first coming to his second coming is also the seventh day, or 7,000th year from creation. Thus, it should not be of any surprise that we also see a seven connected to this story to solidify the timing pattern of the Messiah's return. Oh, wow. And here it is. John chapter 4, verses 52 through 53. So he asked them the hour when he began to get better. And they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. The father knew that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he himself believed, and all his household. It is on the seventh day hmm. in which we shall also be raised up, and then live before him. Hmm. The Good Samaritan Prophecy the familiar story of the Good Samaritan is another witness to the Messiah returning after two days. Luke chapter 10 verses 33 through 35. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took up two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. In the first century, two denarii are about two days of wages. A two-day stay at the inn was also about two days of wages. In knowing that, the math becomes simple. The Good Samaritan offered compassion and then left, intending to return after two days. Again, using the one day as a thousand years principle, this two days equates to two thousand years. Likewise, the Messiah offered his continuous compassion and healing to us nearly 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he then left, but promised to come back. Amazing, you guys. The Fasting Prophecy. Matthew chapter 9, verses 13 through 15. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. This is an interesting statement by our Messiah. He clearly states that he will be leaving for a time and connects that with us fasting. The Messiah's example of a fast, ironically enough, was exactly 40 days in the wilderness, and not likely a coincidence. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness coupled with the Jubilee principle is another mention of 2,000 years of us fasting in the wilderness. In following the Messiah's example of fasting in the wilderness, how long have we also been fasting in the wilderness waiting for the Messiah's return? Nearly 40 Jubilees, or 2,000 years. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 through 13. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, 
nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. In that day the lovely virgins and the young men shall faint for thirst. The Mount Sinai Prophecy Exodus chapter 19 verses 4 through 5 You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. Exodus chapter 19 verses 16 through 20 On the morning of the third day there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. The third day. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Wow. It's hard to ignore the mention of the trumpet blast, lightning, and thunder connected with thick cloud on the third day here. It should also call to mind the Hosea prophecy. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15 through chapter 6 verse 2. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face, and in their distress earnestly seek me. Israel and Judah are unrepentant. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. The Healing on Sabbath Prophecy We just read in Hosea how we will be healed and resurrected on the third day. Hosea chapter 6 verses 1 through 2. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Oh my goodness, friends, this is so amazing. I'm going to move it right towards the last few minutes, and then I'm going to end it, because I don't want to spoil it for <laughs> for those of you who may want to watch the whole thing, you know what I mean? It's hard to put a review because there's so much that is covered in here. But I have to say, there's so much detail involved that, honestly, you've got to watch it yourself, okay? I don't want to influence you in any way. I want you to watch it, do your own due diligence. Now, let me see if I can play it from here. Which is us in the faith. <clears throat> the grape harvest are the rebellious. Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, the angel who has authority over the fire. And he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth, and gathered the grape harvest of the earth, and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trotted outside the city, and blood flowed from the winepress as high as a horse's bridle for 1,600 stadia. Sukkot follows the completion of all harvests and is also a feast of the harvests. Often it's proposed that Sukkot will be the timing of the wedding supper of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 19 verses 6 through 10. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. I'm going to end it there. I think if I continue to play it, it, it you know, it would be a spoiler and I don't want to do that, friends. Remember to check out the description in the video afterward, okay? 
and give what you can toward this production. You know, us believers who are serious students of the Word of God, diligently seeking, we ought to support one another, you know. Oh, I mean, it's three bucks. <laughs> three bucks to rent, seven to purchase. I mean, what's that as peanuts? Let's support one another. <clears throat> Let's not be stingy. Let's be considerate. Support one another because that support is an encouragement. You know what I mean? I'm working on a message, a very detailed Bible prophecy news update. There's so much going on, friends. You'll have to bear with me as I put this together for this week. It will be out. And uh, keep me in your prayer. And also keep this team, the Messiah 2030 people, in your prayers. May the Lord bless them, bless their work. And you know, like they said in the beginning, nothing is de definitive, like set in stone with this. It's all open to us coming together, discussing and interpreting the word together, you know, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay, friends, so <clears throat> I'll be back again soon. Please remember to watch all of it. Let me see if I can exit the full screen, if it will allow me to. Oh, what's that doing? Okay, never mind. The link will be in the description and um, wonderful. I really recommend you watch it. I'll be back again soon. Keep your eyes peeled. I love you. The Lord Jesus be with you.